So, as it is the month of black history, as it is the month of romance, of amour, of affection for young women all around the world, for all those young men who have admiration and inspiration to display their love and affection for a young lady who might live within three or four quarter blocks of their house, but lack the courage, lack the lack the courage, lack the motivation, lack the lack the dick hanging enough to say, babe, I want to slide in your DMs, babe. I want to use this coupon, this coupon for Golden Corral, and take you out and get the nine ninety nine dollar piece. I wanna, I wanna go out there. I wanna do all I can for you. For all of you guys who lack the sunlight of heart in your hearts to say that, I just wanna let you know. I do too sometimes, nigga, and it is what it is, but you got to keep going. You got to stay faithful. So with that being said, there's a young lady out there who has my heart, who's captured my attention, who's captured my love. Um, I shall not say her name because, God forbid, she listen to this podcast and find out that I have affection for her. And it's kind of awkward. I don't know if I want her to know that I like her, but it's okay. I'm kind of in a weird space with it. With that being said, what's going on? My name is JT, the People's Paradise Podcast. It's live again. What's going on with you? How are you doing? What's going on? Welcome to the movement. Welcome to the family. How are you doing? We are live, 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 live. I mean, L O Y E, L O I V E, live, live. Now. Shout out to those who have been paying attention. Shout out to those who have been showing love. Shout out to those who have just been joining into the movement and being a part of the family. I am the young, the young man, the young prince, young duke, young capo. Those are all ranks in the Italian American mafia system. No, I have no affiliation with that, obviously. Um, but what's going on with you? Um, it is a Wednesday. This Tuesday is about to be Wednesday. And within 12 hours, my teeth are finally going to be repaired to how they were before before, before the catastrophe that was. They broke my teeth in half. And, um, man, it's been bad, bro. Like, you know, we, were at a, we were at a party last night. Shout out to Jessica and Ray. We were at a party last night. I don't know. We were just having a conversation. Laughed. So I don't know. And I don't know what Jessica was like. So, uh, what, did, nigga, what happened to your teeth? And everybody just started laughing. And I laughed with them, too. You know, I laughed. And he ha, 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 ha. I laughed with them, too. But uh, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you, nigga. I was a little butthurt. I was like, nigga, why need to tell everybody my teeth fucked up? I told my cousin about it. He was like, well, nigga, we all saw it. Like, nigga, your teeth not invisible. It's not invi- the invisibleness of you having not having teeth on invisible to us. <laughs> the invisibleness of the invisibleness of your teeth. The invisibleness of your teeth is not mis- invisible to us, nigga. We we see we can obviously see there was some there was some mistake that took place in between now and yesterday, nigga. Something happened. What was it? And I just told him simply, man, you know. I was trying to pull open a bag of oranges, and you know how bags of fruit. If you go, if you get bags of fruit not from the fleet market, which is in every damn, which is in every small city in California, but if you get like a bag of fruits from like Walmart, they had like them little net bags. I nigga, I try to rip the net bag with my teeth, and nigga, you know, it did not go the way that I expected it to go. Nigga, next thing you know, I'm walking around looking like, nigga, looking like I got punched in the mouth by Mike Tyson, nigga, on a Monday. So um, it is all to the good though, because only I'm not going to look like this longer. Within 12 hours, I'm about to install this shit in my mouth. It's going to be lit. I'm about to be back to normal. You know, I might, my normal, my mic, my smile might actually give him, actually even look a lot better than the day before. And actually, I'm thinking if I do it right. So, you know, we gonna, it's going to be lit. Now, uh, but what's going on in your world? What's going on with you? What are you doing today? Right now, I'm trying to get the house, enjoy myself, having a good time, sitting back, podcasting. I'm in the mood nowadays, bro, where I'm just in this mind state now where I want to try to make as much progress with podcasting, with broadcasting, with putting myself out there as possible. And I want to do that by providing you with good time, content, by bringing a big brother, by being dope to you, by you having an engaging interaction with me, whether we're talking about how Young Thug is changing his name to sex. Swear to God, that is actually a real story. No, I'm not making that up. That is actually true. And we are going to discuss that a little bit more. Whether we're young, they change the name of the states. Whether they're talking about how I'm, how I'm literally nutting on myself in anticipation for the Lion King film that's coming out. Or how Incredibles comes out in four to five months. And nigga, literally, I'm almost biting my fingers off, nigga. Because I really want to go see that film right now. But um, got a lot to go and talk about. So we're going we to get it popping. Um, Let's see. What should we we talk about everything? So let's start, let's start talking about some shit. So um, I didn't touch on the Black China sex tape yesterday, just because I really don't care about Black China. I really don't want to talk about Black China. I've never looked at Black China as a as a morally ideal person, 
And I remember two years ago on Twitter when I was working out in Bayshore, shot the Bayshore Boulevard in San Francisco, California. And I was working out there and I, I was I was getting I got to like a little I got into a little bit of Twitter funk, a little bit of Twitter uh, Twitter warfare, a little Twitter battle with it. <laughs> uh a battle a, a battalion of the tweets. And me and this young lady had a Twitter battle because I was saying that I don't think Black China is necessarily going to reach the the peak of success entertainment and tinder. I don't think Black China is going to reach the peak and pinnacle of greatness in her career of being just an internet thought that Khloe Kardashian is going to reach or any of the Khloe or any of the Kardashian clan is going to has reached before. And she you know she waxed poetic. First off, don't talk about my bitch Black China like you don't know like you don't know who the fuck she is, nigga. You know who she is. She been doing this. She did that. She did that. She got her own earphones, her own slippers. I got her earrings right now, and I got a six five six by four cut out of that bitch in my bedroom right now. And I let her go on a little rant. I let it go on a little rant. And then I responded back to her and gave my own personal opinions about that. And I, like I told her, I have nothing against Black China because I don't know Black... Oh, that's the thing I don't understand about people. You have these people, man, nowadays who be fans of Khloe Kardashian, fans of Travis Scott, fans of XX Tentacion, fans of Bill Cosby, fans of Murphy Lee, fans of the nigga from, uh, from, uh, from St. Lunatics with the mask. You have people who are fans of all these people and they'll go online and vehemently defend their 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 deity i'll say their their celebrity deity their celebrity deity from from ridicule from jokes from harm for shame by the public from from don lemon on cnn saying that they bullshit they're defending from this whole wave of shit and the thing i keep thinking to me bro is you never even sat at a at a coffee table in Starbucks with this nigga before. Like, you don't even know what this nigga is really like in real life. You might not even like that nigga if you meet him, bro. Like, I, it's a lot of niggas. It's a lot of niggas, bro. I tell you, who I love, who I love, like Charlamagne the God. I love Charlamagne the God. I love his content. I love what he does. I love. I love just hearing his voice sometimes. But I can honestly say, if that nigga, if I knew that nigga in real life, I probably wouldn't like him. I probably wouldn't like him because I remember because I remember growing up in school, growing up in the ghettos of California. I remember growing up in Ghettos of California and the in the in the back alleyways and housing projects of Alabama. I knew a lot of niggas like Charlamagne the guy. Those short, dark skinned niggas who always got jokes. They always got a roast niggas. They always got a joke roast niggas. They always trying to piss you off. And I can't stand niggas like that. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you right now, that is I'm gonna tell you I hate to sound racist. That is my least favorite, least favorite tribe of African Americans. Is short dark skinned niggas. I cannot stand them niggas. I hate them. I, oh, nigga, I hate them niggas like roaches. Like, because they, they're always cracking jokes. They're always trying to roast you. They're always trying to roast you. They're always trying to prove a point. They always want to prove how hard they are. Prove like they, them niggas is, them niggas, them niggas is, them niggas is, just, them niggas is just whack, bro. Like, I can't, I, I stand, I can't stand them niggas. Like, whack ass niggas, bro. Fuck y'all niggas, man. I can't stand y'all niggas. All y'all niggas. Except y'all, I mean, the guy and Kevin Hart. And Scruncho, who for those of you who aren't aware who Scruncho is, he is a very talented comedian from Los Angeles, California. A great man. And I think you guys will actually like his content a lot. Now, uh, but yeah, I think I, I, I don't care about Black China shit. I mean, it's, it's, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, a sex tape was recently released of Black China. And I mean, I'd be lying to you if I told you I didn't, if I told you. I didn't suspect that she probably released that tape herself. Uh, this is a world. This is a world where celebrities are all fighting for relevance. Where celebrities are all fighting for relevance. They're all trying to fight for relevance. And the thing about it is, they'll do any and any. They'll do any or anyone. Do anything or anyone to stay relevant and keep that keep that level of fame. You know, I don't pay attention to Black China, so I don't know how relevant she was before before a video of her clapping cheek or get her her shit clapped or giving terrible hair came out. But you know, it, you know, it is what it is. I mean, the only thing I don't understand about all these young girls, man, Black China. Well, Black China's damn near forty, but Black China, uh, Kim Kardashian, and I, and I actually like Kim Kardashian. I love her hustle. I respect her. I respect her hustle. I love her grind, and I think she's a beautiful woman. But I don't get about these people like Black China and Kim Kardashian and um. From the Alexis Skies and the Tierra Marie's and the not Tierra Marie, that's a bad example. The Bria Miles and the you know, all these women who have nine hundred thousand plus niggas on Instagram masturbating to their photos on a daily basis. 
I always wonder, like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, when you guys get in your 50s or 60s, are you going to feel comfortable with, with knowing that your kids are going to know this was all that she gave to society was being known as just some sex symbol, it's being known as a, as a, as a masturbation tool? Like, and once again, I'm not judging you. I am judging you. I am judging you. But at the same time, it's not, it's not that I'm trying to be rude. I'm, I wonder, like, because, like, even what I'm doing right now, when I'm doing podcasts, I'm talking shit. But at the same time, I like to think that when I'm talking to you, you're getting some lessons out of it. You're getting some life lessons. You learn to listen to me. You're low-key, like, relating to me. I'm thinking about things outside the box. I'm bringing a guy that listen to me, not just thinking, oh, my God, I want to shoot myself now. Charles Manson, brother. But, um, but you know, that is a far cry. But, like, I mean, like. I'm serious. Like I'm praying, and I'm praying that if you're listening to me, you're getting something out of the conversation. You're listening to me. You're vibing with me. Excuse me. You're understanding and moving. Like I'm praying that when you listen to me, it's something. It's something about me that you're connected with. I'm praying, and and uh, it's just I don't know. Like I don't. I don't know. You know. I don't know. I think. I think. The thing about society is. I think with entertainment in general. Whether it's pornography, whether it's Instagram Instagram modelism, whether it's um, voice over acting. There is something to be said about how much money there is in escapism. In escapism. You know, I, th- I feel like in this world, we do so much stuff just to escape from life. We do so much of stuff just to escape from life. Most of us, we go to work and we, go, we work 40 hours a week to put food on the table, put bills in the, put food on the table, put food on the table, keep the bills on. And then we look, then we pay for ne- Netflix. We might go on a trip every few months. We go to the club. All these forms of escapism. And all these uh, entertainment and entertainment entertainment in of itself it serves as an escape is a, is a route as a way of escape as a way of escape from our reality and so you know you have all these forms of escape and i don't i've been thinking more about this more and more and more because like lately like um like lately when i try to like watch like netflix and hulu and i gotta i'm using my free hulu subscription right now but uh when I try to watch those shows, I get so bored and, it's, and I get so anxious and it's like, I don't want to do this. Like, and it's because my natural form of escapism is pacing, is running, is jogging. My natural form of escapism revolve, involves movement. So it involves me running or it involves me podcasting. And even this is my form of escapism. When I get on this microphone, I could talk to you. Some of y'all know. Yeah, some of y'all know because you heard me do it. I'll talk to y'all for three or four hours. The only reason I might not do it today is because I got to record in like four or five other different places. But I'll talk on this podcast for a long time. But... You know, I think that's, I think we all have our own forms of escape. I think we all have these, we all have, there's all these generally accepted, socially, socially accepted forms of escapism, which is going to the movies, going to TV, maybe joining a gym. I don't know, but I, it's kind of weird. I guess I never thought about how much of our, I never thought bro, about how much of our world revolves around escapism, escape, like escaping reality. Like I. I never thought about that, bro, and it's it's, it's crazy. Me. Like this is my love. Like I love doing this shit, so that's why I kind of go hard on this. Mm. I don't know. I guess you know. I, and I, you know, I could take. I could break the branch of. I could break the. I could break it at the end of this branch from the tree, and start having a conversation about chasing your dreams and fulfilling your goals and chasing after your ideals. And I think that's important. I think a lot of people do that. There are a lot of there are a lot of motivational speakers out there who do go that route of like empowering people and letting them know that their dreams can be accomplished to infinity beyond. To infinity and beyond is not just something that Buzz Lightyear said in Toy Story, nigga. That same mantra can apply to you and it can work to you like you're using the mantras from the book The Secret. But I just think like I don't. I've never liked motivational speaking. I've never. I like it. Like I listen to Les Brown. I listen to Les Brown when I jog. I listen to um. E um what's that boy from what E Smith or E Eric something Pastor East E Smith when I uh, when I draw but in general generally speaking generally speaking I don't like motivational speaking because I always feel like I feel like ninety eight percent of the people who are motivational speakers are doing it just because they see a, a, a because they see monetary gain in it. And there's a lot of monetary gain in motivation. The motiv- motivational speakers, in essence, are just pastors. I think the same way about radio or podcasts. In essence, we're just pastors. We're con- we're con- we're congregation leaders. And what we're all trying to do is we're all trying to get you to listen to our con. We're all trying to get you to listen to our message. We're all trying to get you to my epic. We're all trying to get you to vibe to our movement and and follow our words and listen to our verses. That's what we're all trying to do. And you know what? It might work or it might not work. It, it just depends, but. It's the best thing in the world. It's the it's 
It's I don't know, so I don't know. I, I guess I guess when I see motivational speakers, I see the disingenuity of of it. If that makes sense, I don't see that. I don't see genuine, actual, authentic wanting to, to connect with people and soul. Of it. I just see like business dollars, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's me. Like when I'm doing this podcast, I do this, bro, because I love. This is my calling. This is my calling to be a broadcaster. This is my calling to do this. So I do this because I love it. And it's not to say that what you're doing is wrong. You know, this for some of you guys who listen to me right now are in the very, very are in the are in the cocoon. Of career and their cocoon process, cocooning process of creating your business, creating that new laundry, sh- um, creating, create, um, opening that new laundry mat in the corner, opening that new taqueria on the corner, or buying a subway and flipping that. You know, we're all in the cocooning pro, we're all in the cocoon stage for our business or a cocoon stage for our careers. Or some of you guys have already achieved that level. And for those of y'all who are rich, who are have already achieved that level, you know, throw a nigga a few dollars. I gotta go fund me. Support, support young black business out here. But now, like, I, like, I, I, I feel that, and it's like, I, I, I I don't know. I just I you know I kind of I, I think I divide I divided I divided you know because that's something about that's something that that you know millennials like I would say millennials are really struggling with nowadays just finding your calling, finding your purpose. And what I've always said about that is this: there are people who there are people who um. So I think there's two types of people in the world. At the end of the day, you're going to become one of these people regardless. You're either going to be one of the people who chooses, a, and this is, now when I'm saying this, I'm more focusing on the people who are in their late teens and early 20s because a lot of you guys are in the collegiate phase of your life and, you know, you're about to make it four or five, six or 17 different uh, fucking mistakes and I hope that the advice that I give you can deter and build a great wall in front of them, you know, shout out to China. Um, there are generally two types of people. The people who choose what they want to do because they love it and the people who choose what they want to do People who choose what career they choose because it's going to provide them a comfortable living style. It's going to provide them with a comfortable living. And either or isn't bad. Either or is not bad. Either or is not bad. It's either or is not bad. I happen. I happen to be the former, which is I am the person. I am the person who. I am the person who chooses to follow what I what I love to do. Chooses to follow what I dream of doing. Chooses to follow what I get up in the morning for happy doing. Because, and the reason why is just because, the British simply Bobby wrote you. Money doesn't make me happy. Comfortable living doesn't make me happy. It's satisfying, you know. Don't get me wrong, nigga, because you know I had had I had had I had a uh, goddamn had I had a, the concrete for a bed instead of a couch, nigga. I probably would be pissed, but I say couch because I, I got my own place, but I don't. Have, I have a couch here, but I probably would be upset. But I I I see the world. I see the world bigger than that. I see the world is. I see the world is just bigger than like I don't want to just be doing something just. To, I don't want to just be surviving. I feel like a lot of times when you do careers that involve you doing something that you don't like, I feel like you're just surviving. I don't want to survive. I want to thrive. I don't want to just survive because I don't want to spend my whole life just doing. That's, bro, because, bro, life is so short, bro. I just, I don't know. I remember, bro, it was this weird awakening phase I went through three years ago and I was thinking about life, bro. And I was like, I was like, I was like, I was thinking like, bro, like you have a lot of people, bro, who just, do a career and it's something that they hate or something that they don't like or something that doesn't fulfill them for their whole life just to survive just to keep the lights on just to keep food on the table just to survive and die like that's all you're going to give to the world that's all that the world is going to survive and die like I guess if I can say anything to you right now you know besides saying this cinnamon toast crunch is not the taste that you can see I <laughs> I would say um, I would say that you know Give more to this world besides eight hours a day. Give more to this world besides eight hours a day. That's what I would say. Give more to this world. You have more. To, you have more to give to this world than eight hours a day. Go hard. Go hard. I mean, go hard. And whether it's a dream, it doesn't have to be a dream. It doesn't even have to be an artistic, an artistic aspiration. It can be something just I. I feel like we all. I feel like we all exist in this wide world. We all have to live. We all have to have dreams, bro. That's what makes the world go around. That's what makes innovations. That's what makes scientific creations, bro. Like that's what makes this world so great and amazing. Like, excuse me, but yeah, like it's it's amazing. Like you can't. I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. Now, with that being said, my name is JT. 
Um, I love you. You are the best person in the world. It was great talking to you. It was great having this conversation. I love you. In the words of Cherie Denise, she said, I love you. I love you. I love you. And hey, don't break my heart. It was nice talking to you all. I invite all of you guys to please press the share button. Please press that share button because I'm on the path of achieving my dreams. And I would love for you to share this around the world. Remember, JT, thank you for being part of the family.